All right, it's very late at night and Halloween is in just a few days. So I've put on my spookiest costume and have decided to bring to you a tier list of a whole bunch of Halloween cereals. We're taking a look at, uh, I don't know what this is, Carmella Creeper. We got the Halloween Fruity Pebbles. We got It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown Cereal. Of course, Halloween Lucky Charms. We got Pumpkin Spice Frosted Flakes. We got Boo Berry. We've got the, the Monster Mash Remix Cereal. We've got Reese's Puffs Bats. We've got, of course, Classic Count Chocula. We've got the uh, Halloween Rice Krispies. And we've got, you can't forget, Frankenberry. I've got some almond milk, and we're gonna do a quick tier list, try out all of these Halloween cereals. But here's the thing, right? To rank the cereals, I think it's important that we consider how they hold up uh, with respect to sogginess. So after we try some of the cereal uh, with milk, we'll go ahead and do a little Halloween math worksheet, and then we'll come back and try the cereal again in order to assess the SOG factor. I've got my earbuds in, I'm listening to some spooky Halloween music, so I'm feeling totally sketched out right now. I think it's time we get into some of these cereals. There are two cereals here that I've already tried, so I figured we should get those ones out of the way first. We're gonna start with the Frosted Flakes Pumpkin Spice. And before we get into the tier ranking, I should probably give you just a sense of where I'm at in terms of cereal tastes. So for me, I would probably say an S tier cereal is Cinnamon Toast Crunch. In A tier, I think I would probably put Honey Bunches of Oats. In B tier, B tier cereal, uh, probably, probably um, Cocoa Puffs, I'd probably put in B tier. A C tier cereal, probably Golden Grams. A D tier cereal, um, Maybe Grape Nuts. The thing is, I kind of like Grape Nuts. I'd probably put Frosted Flakes in D tier. And then F tier, um, maybe we could put Honey Smacks, maybe Pops. Uh, I'm honestly, uh, Lucky Charms, I'd actually put in F tier. That, that would be a more hot take. I would put Lucky Charms in F tier. Keep your marshmallows the hell out of my cereal, all right? That's disgusting. Uh, so let's start with the Pumpkin Spice Frosted Flakes. We'll take a quick look at the box, and then we'll try out the cereal. It's a pretty attractive looking box, I would say. I like the little leaf in the corner that says limited edition. I like the phrase of corn here. This is Frosted Flakes of corn. But generally, I don't feel like this is capturing the fall vibe too much. Like the color of blue for the as the primary color of the box just seems like a slightly strange choice. We got our nutrition facts, more uh, pumpkin spice there. And on the back, there's not even any activities, which makes this a pretty, you know, like not a very good cereal box. The back of the box is supposed to have stuff to do. Fall into great pumpkin spice flavor. You got some other Kellogg's pumpkin uh, cereals advertised here. Three yummy reasons to love the season, but absolutely no fun activities. So that stinks. All right, let's get into this bad boy. And then once we try this out, we can do a little bit of math while we wait for the cereal to get all sogged up and we can see how it stands up to the sogginess factor have to take my froggy mitts off in order to pour this cereal out. And uh, since I already had some of this, there's there's not a ton left. You know, these cereal boxes, that they, they don't come totally full. It's kind of like chip bags, but, but not quite as bad. All right, I got the cereal in here. Let's add the milk and we'll see how this is. I can smell it from here. And you know, when you think about this cereal, I think it's important we have to consider it's supposed to be pumpkin spice. Um, so let's go ahead and see how this is. Mm. Yeah, you know my problem with this, it is refreshing at this time of morning, having uh, some nice cold cereal and milk, but I'll tell you my problem with this, let me take one more bite. Thing is, it doesn't really taste pumpkin-y, it just tastes like frosted flakes. So, you know, that's kind of the problem here. We'll say a little more and we'll come back 
assess how it stands up to the SOG. After we do, a little bit of math. All right, this worksheet is Halloween humor. It says boo right on the front. That's pretty scary. I'll put in my name here. Now, if you've ever been to school before, maybe you remember doing some silly worksheets like this when the holidays are kicking around. I always got a kick out of that, you know? Let's see what's going on here. Directions, add or subtract. Then we have to write the letters that match the answers on the lines below to solve the riddle. The riddle is, what is the ghost's favorite ride at the fair? Hmm, I don't know. Let's, let's run through this and see. Four plus six, that's 10. And uh, eight minus four, that's four. Three plus two is five. Nine minus two is seven. Five plus three is eight. Six minus six is zero. Three plus three is six. Eight minus seven is one. Two plus one is three. Six minus four is two. Hope I explained that pretty good. Let's go ahead and write the letters where they belong. In the 10 spot, we gotta put R. In the four spot, we gotta put U. In the uh, five spot, we have to put Y. In the seven spot, we have to put N. Hmm, where are we headed with this? In the eight spot, we have to put C. In the D spot, we have to put, oh, it's a scary go round, isn't it? In the, uh, the zero spot, we have to put D, a scary go round. That's so funny. In these, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, the, the zero and the O, they're freaking me out. So in the six spot, I have to put O. I mean, I already know what this is. Two is S, right? Two is S. And then we have one is A. And then three is G. Where's my three? There it is. Three is G. Six. Six. Six is also O. And then 10 is that R. So scary go around. That's very funny. That's the ghost's favorite ride at the fair. Let's go ahead and uh, take another bite of this pumpkin spice frosted flakes now that it's had a minute to sog up here. Mmm. That's awful. God. Nope, I don't like that. So, I mean, Frosted Flakes suck. Like, what the hell? They barely taste like anything. And the Pumpkin Spice Frosted Flakes, I think you can smell the pumpkin more than you can taste it. Really not impressive at all. Um, you know, it has the problem that Frosted Flakes have, which is that it just doesn't hold up to the SOG at all. So I think Pumpkin Spice Frosted Flakes, I mean... It does taste good, but honestly, I think I'm comfortable putting this in F tier because it barely tastes like pumpkin, doesn't taste like much, period, um, and it's just really soggy. You know, it sogs so quick, it's weak and, and floppy. So I'm putting this in F tier. All right, up next, we've got Reese's Puffs Bats. So I think it's just like normal Reese's Puffs, nothing too spooky going on here, except the cereal parts, you know, are, uh, are shaped like bats. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Reese's Puffs. I never really liked Reese's Puffs that much as a kid, at least not enough to like eat them regularly, but it's chocolate peanut butter. Can't really go wrong with that. I'm a pretty big peanut butter fan. So let's take a quick look at the box. Then we'll try the cereal, do a little bit of math and go from there. This box sure is spooky. Look at that. Limited edition made with real Reese's peanut butter. I wonder when um, when the real Reese's peanut butter comes into play during the production process of the Reese's Puffs cereal. These are sweet and crunchy corn puffs. You can see here on the box that they don't really look like bats. I mean, I see what they're going for, but those really do not look like bats. It says they're enlarged to show detail. So when they're tiny, they look even less like bats, I'm sure. We've got our nutrition facts there on the side. 12 grams of sugar in this bad boy. Um, the back of the box stinks because there are no fun games or activities, but design-wise, I, I do really like the back of this box. Like, if you're not gonna go for the fun games and activities, at least go for some artistic flair. And this is really uh, beautiful. I really like the, the idea here. It's like the graffiti uh, Reese's Puffs sort of wall, you know, that you might see in old Reese's Puffs commercials. Um, Cause those had like, you know, a hip hop sort of graffiti scene type vibe. You got the graffiti on here, RP for Reese's Puffs. And then it's just broken open into a spooky Halloween night with a bunch of bats, uh, normal bats, not Reese's Puffs bats, just flying out. It's kind of weird though. It looks like there's multiple like styles of bat that feel like they don't really go together. Like there's these ones, which I think look pretty cool. Then you have this really simple clip art one. And then you have these more blurred ones in the background and they all look like they are different art styles. 
kind of weird. All right, we're hoping for better results this time around with the Reese's Puffs bats. Um, the thing is, the cereal, like, they, they don't look like bats, you know? They do not look like bats at all. I mean, you can even see on the box, they don't really look like bats. They look like, I mean, really, they hardly look like anything, but I don't know, they maybe look like wrapped hard candies, you know? They definitely don't look like bats, but they do look totally coated in sugar, and they smell really good. Um, yeah, really, get yeah, has that prominent peanut butter and chocolate smell. For some reason, I didn't really remember Reese's Puffs having both the peanut butter and the chocolate flavor, but I guess that's literally like from the song, you know? I haven't seen a cereal commercial in ages, but the peanut butter chocolate flavor of Reese's Puffs is certainly, you know, a deeply embedded part of my brain. Let's add some milk here, take a bite, and then we can get back to the good stuff, and uh, let's see how this is these bats. Peanut butter chocolate bats. Mmm. Yeah, you know, it's amazing. Amazing how sweet these look. Like, I can see the sugar all over them. I mean, how many grams of sugar we got? We got 12 grams of sugar. That's not that much. Um, I mean, it's a decent amount for breakfast, you know, but I got like Mountain Dew's like 52 grams of sugar for a can. It just doesn't taste like that much. It smells. It smells so much. It looks so sugary. It really doesn't taste like very much. Um, let's do some math. We'll let it sog and see how it fares. All right, this is some two digit pumpkin edition without regrouping. Um, I'm not going to bother adding my name because I'm not turning these in. The directions are to find the sum of each pumpkin and then to color the pumpkins using the color key. So even numbers will color orange, odd numbers will color yellow. I hate coloring, by the way. So we're supposed to do two-digit pumpkin edition without regrouping? I gotta be honest, right? I'm a math teacher. I don't teach addition. I don't really know what regrouping is. I mean, I have some idea. I'm just going to add the numbers. I hope that's okay with you. 11 plus 11 is uh, 22. 17 plus 21 is 38. 33 plus 21, that's 54. Can you keep up with this? I mean, this is crazy. You see, this is why they pay me the big bucks for this, because I'm so good at this stuff, this addition stuff. I ain't even regrouping. Who needs regrouping? I don't even know what regrouping is. Go ask a middle schooler. Beats me. I don't know. Uh, 86. 81 plus 15, that's going to be 96. Oh, you know what? 99. I think by addition without regrouping, they don't mean, hey, you have to do these problems and you have to do it without regrouping. They mean none of these problems require regrouping because regrouping is like something with like carrying the one, you know, I don't know, stuff like that. I don't know nothing about that. I ain't done that in like 10 years. 81 plus 10, that's 90. 91, 91, 91, <laughs> uh, 109, 30 plus 49 is 79, 47 plus uh, 51, that's going to be 98, 62 plus 14, um, that's going to be 76. You know, all these pumpkins uh, on the sheet, they look, they look okay, but I feel like they should have picked, um, I don't know, more round looking pumpkins, but I guess the fact that they picked these tall, narrow ones, let them fit more math problems on the paper. I wonder how much graphic design thought went into, like, picking what pumpkin clip art to use for this. Okay, now we got to do the coloring. We're going we're gonna to make this really quick, right, because I really hate coloring. So the orange ones, the, the even ones will be orange. Um, so there you go. Um, 38, that's even. An even number, by the way, in case this is news to you, is a number that is divisible by 2. So any even number you could write as 2 times some integer. For example, um, 98 is even because we can write it as 2 times 40, um, 40, uh, 47 there, right? Not 47, sorry, 49, 49. I'm doing a lot at once here, right? Like I'm thinking about my Reese's Puffs. I'm, I'm trying to do this addition. I'm trying to color. And then you got me trying to do division and stuff here. Um, and then the odd ones, we got to make yellow. I was going to say, it seems like a strange choice to have like orange and yellow because they're such similar colors, but I guess this is like a fall theme, you know? Odd numbers, by the way, are numbers that are one more than a multiple of two. So there you go. Uh, we've colored orange, we've colored yellow. That really added a whole lot. Looks really beautiful now. Let's get back to our Reese's Puffs that are shaped like bats. 
All right, let's see how these hold up. Hmm. Well. So I gotta say, I really don't like the texture of these things very much. Um, like the texture is stale. The texture just feels stale. Um, like, like stale potato chips or something. Uh, but it does hold up pretty well to the, the milk. Like, um, the texture is very similar to what it was when I first took a spoonful. Um, it still has that firm crunchiness that's, that's just got that kind of weird stale texture. Um, I like the taste definitely more than the Frosted Flakes, but again, it doesn't taste like much. The texture is kind of weird. Um, so I'm going to have to go with D tier for the Reese's Puffs bats. They also don't look like bats, right? They look like globs, so D tier. All right, up next is Frankenberry. And uh, I haven't tried this one yet, so this is new cereal. We're going to have to open this one up. And, uh, you know, it's based off Frankenstein, right? I don't know if you ever read the book Frankenstein, but very good book. So let's take a look at the box, and then we'll open it up and try the cereal out. Look at this goofy guy. I mean, the Frankenstein monster, who I'm just going to call Frankenstein, because, you know, people call the monster Frankenstein, and I think that's fine. I know that the scientist's name was Victor Frankenstein, but, you know, we call the monster Frankenstein. Just makes sense. Um, you know, the, the character in the, the, the novel Frankenstein is a really cool and complex character, and this guy just looks like a goober. Look at him. Total goober. So that's dumb. I do not like the character design at all. You can see the cereal. There are these cute little ghosts. It's artificially strawberry flavored frosted cereal with monster marshmallows. The monster marshmallows are definitely the, sco uh, the spookiest part. We got the two grams of protein. So we are gonna get swall off this Frankenberry cereal and uh, the little comic here on the back. That's okay to have a comic. I definitely prefer the, um, you know, like fun activities. Count Chocula, Frankenberry, and Booberry are chilling in Count's castle when suddenly, thump, thump, thump. Uh, whoa, 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 what, what is that creepy noise? Count, I think your castle is haunted. And I'm not doing the haunting. That's, that's Booberry there who's not doing the haunting. Thump, 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 thump. Frankly, you should go first, Count. It is your castle. I'm not afraid. You're afraid. That sound is driving me batty. Don't be afraid. I think it's coming from the ballroom. You two go in. I'll be there in spirit. Ha <laughs> ha. Thump, 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 thump. Eek. Gasp. Hey, says Frankenberry. It's my long lost cousin, Carmella Creeper, rocking the joint. Hiya, cuz. Welcome to the Monster Mash, fellas. She's spinning tasty tracks and her even tastier caramel apple cereal. Carmella, I haven't seen you in centuries. You're killing it on stage. Introducing Carmella Creeper, Frankenberry's long lost zombie cousin and the life of every party, even if she isn't alive. Wow, that's wonderful. All right, so it's supposed to be strawberry flavored and it's news to me that there are marshmallows in this. I did not know that. Um, so I'm kind of scared now because you know how I feel about marshmallows in my cereal. I really, I don't like it. But, but frankly, I haven't, which is almost a pun, but not really. Um, frankly, I haven't really eaten cereal, you know, because I'm like an adult. So I haven't had, I know, believe it or not. Um, but I haven't had like marshmallows in my cereal for a long time. So maybe, maybe with my newly sophisticated adult taste, I will now like marshmallows in my cereal. This is actually going to kind of be unfair because I just poured some in this bowl. And I think like two of the marshmallows got in here. So I got to take off my glove. This glove helps me when I'm writing math, like on the iPad. Uh, but let's go ahead, add the milk and try out the Frankenberry. Uh, the cereal looks like ghosts. I don't remember the box mentioning that this, the shapes are like ghosts, um, but that's what they look like, right? Look at that, it looks like a ghost. Um, yeah, it's sticky. What does it smell like? <laughs> Just smells like straight up sugary breakfast cereal. All right, um, looks like styrofoam. Let's take a, let's take a bite. Holy moly. You know, oh my God. I was trying to think about what this tastes like. It is a uh, Fruit Loops is what it tastes like. This next spoonful has a marshmallow. Yeah. Um, 
Is it Fruit Loops? Maybe that tastes more like Apple Jacks. Um, I don't know. It's fine. It's pleasant. It's actually the most flavorful cereal so far, I think. Um, so I definitely give it credit for that. Let's do a little bit of math and we'll come back when it's sogged up a little. I feel like sogged up a little is a really um, like gross sounding phrase. I think I need to find a different way to say that. Um, once it's moisturized, we're gonna let the Frankenberry cereal moisturize. All right, next worksheet. We're doing subtraction to five. What does it mean to five? D subtraction to five? Um, huh. I'm not 100% sure what that means, but let's just do the problem. Um, we're going to use the pictures, right? 3 minus 1. What is 3 minus 1 anyway? Well, we got these three bats. If we take away one bat, we got two bats left. 3 minus 1 is 2. 3 minus 2, we got three cauldrons. Take away two of them, we got one cauldron left. Four spooky owls. Take away one of them, we got three owls left. It's very late at night, so it's good we're keeping this simple, right? I was doing like calculus and, and all this stuff all day. Uh, four buckets minus three buckets. Uh, that's gonna be one bucket. I guess that's like a candy uh, candy bucket, right? Um, five of those minus two of them. It's gonna be three of them. We got three of those. Five candy corns minus three candy corns. That's gonna be two candy corns, you know? One of my students was just telling me the other day how she thinks candy corns like the best thing in the world. Um, I really respected the, uh, the commitment to that opinion. That's a pretty unpopular take. Um, I think candy corn's pretty gross, personally. Um, but uh, there you go, that's subtraction. You remember subtraction? Subtraction's cool. Let's go ahead and try the cereal. I don't have high hopes. I don't have high hopes, I mean, I think it's really not gonna be very good, especially now, let's, let's give this a try. It's so bright, look at that. This is not natural. Children should not be eating this. Only adults, this is for adults. Hmm. You know, wow. Let me get my gloves on. You know, that's not bad. Like texture wise, it hasn't changed that much. It's definitely a little bit softer. Um, I maybe could have picked up some strawberry ghosts that were a little bit deeper in the milk. Um, my bowl had barely any marshmallows in it, and the spoonfuls that I had with the marshmallows, I didn't notice anything unpleasant about them. Um, so, honestly, I think it's fair to put that in C tier. I don't like this trend that, that each cereal is like improving by one tier because um, it feels too formulaic, but we got like 11 cereals, so you know, it can't go on forever. I'm comfortable putting that in C tier though. I like that the cereal is shaped like ghosts. They actually look like ghosts. Um, the taste is very prominent. It does not taste anything like strawberries at all. Um, but you know, it's that like stereotypical breakfast cereal, um, fruity taste. I don't like the box design. I think Frankenberry looks completely ridiculous. Um, but yeah, it holds up okay to the, um, to the milk and everything. So I'm gonna go C tier for Frankenberry. All right, up next, we've got the chocolate uh, haunted Lucky Charms. Now, of course, this cereal, it's Lucky Charms, infamously contains marshmallows, which is definitely a point of concern. Uh, this is my dad's favorite cereal, is Lucky Charms, not necessarily the chocolate um, haunted Lucky Charms. But let's take a closer look at this box, and then we'll crack into the cereal. What a beautiful box, look at this. Look at the leprechaun there. Is his name Lucky? I don't even remember. Uh, but I love, he's got the fangs there. He's got the purple outfit with the little bat on the hat. I don't know what's going on there with his um, his cuffs, but those look cool. Uh, really great design, just um, a whole lot of personality here. A lot of fonts going on. Haunted, limited edition, marshmallows, Lucky Charms, chocolate. There's a lot of fonts going on. Charclity, uh whole grain cereal with marshmallows, uh-huh. Uh, there's our nutrition facts on the side, and here on the back, we've got Haunt and Go Seek. Juega al escondite con Lucky. Um, we're supposed to find all the ghost bats, pumpkins, black cats, and spiders that are haunting the magic forest. And then, see if you can find all eight, uh, eight hidden magic charms. So that's cool. You got a little activity here. Uh, I'm not going to do it because it seems like it might require pointing, which is not easy for me to do right now. But I like that there's an activity on the back. It gets points for that. Although the design looks completely ridiculous. I guess it's kind of funny though, actually, isn't it? Because, well, unicorns make sense because this is Lucky Charms. So we got the rainbows, we got the unicorns. And then, I don't know, this is a guy. It doesn't look like Lucky the elf. It's just some kid wearing a unicorn costume. 
And then it's a unicorn wearing a like Lucky the Leprechaun uh, costume. I don't know, that's just weird. I feel like these characters do not fit in the spooky forest vibe here. The backs of these boxes really do take me back, um, you know, to eating cereal as a kid and just having the box right in front of you, staring intently at the back while milk drips down your chin and you munch on this really sugary, you know, really hearty, really hearty breakfast, Get re getting ready to go to school and all that good stuff. Um, okay, this looks, uh, it doesn't smell like much at all. It looks, at a glance, kind of dark in, in the cereal box. Let's pour it out. Um, okay. It looks a lot like Frankenberry, um, just because the, the designs of the cereal is really simple, like with a hole in it. Um, <laughs> I have no idea what these are supposed to be. Oh, it's, it's Lucky Charms, right? They're supposed to be like horseshoes or something? Huh. Would have been cool if they went with like a, a more spooky design. Um, I don't know. The marshmallows don't look like much. Um, the chocolatey bits don't look like very much. It doesn't smell like very much. It doesn't smell like much at all. I think it smells faintly like I remember of just normal Lucky Charms smelling. Um, but normal Lucky Charms aren't chocolate, so these aren't really supposed to be normal Lucky Charms. Um, the marshmallows with the chocolate, it looks strange. Obviously, marshmallows and chocolate is a kind of natural combo with s'mores and stuff, but because these marshmallows are like pink and green, it just looks a little weird. Anyway, I want to do a little bit more math, so why don't we pour out the milk and uh, try out some of this chocolate. Lucky Charms. Um, I ate a lot of cereal as a kid, right? There were times where it was definitely my go-to breakfast. Other times it was like bagels or um, oatmeal. But uh, I don't really remember ever having Halloween cereals. Mmm, hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Well. I'm a big chocolate fan. Um, so I like that. I like that taste a lot. Marshmallows do nothing but make it worse. Like, I do not like that marshmallow texture. It's stupid. Um, but that just tastes like the uh, the Malto meal, like the, the no-name brand cereal that's served in like the giant bags um, or sold in the giant bags, tastes just like that. That's a, that's a great chocolatey flavor. Let's do a little bit of math. Will we let that moisturize? You know, it is uh, really hot in this spooky costume. Like it's a late October day, late October morning, um, but it's not that cold, you know? So like being in this, this spooky costume, it's really hot. Um, here's our next spooky math worksheet, Halloween multiplication. Why are bats like false teeth? The first letter in the joke is T, and it's an ex exclamation point there at the end, so it's going to be exciting. Um, let's go through and see if we can find the answer to this joke. 7 times 2, that is 14. 8 times 6, that's going to be 48. 4 times 5 is going to be 20, 6 times 3 is 18, 8 times 4 is 32, 3 times 8 is 24, 7 times 5 is 35, 2 times 9 is 18, 6 times 1 is 6, we got 72, 16, 27, 45, 49, 12, and 40. Not giving the Lucky Charms much time to moisturize here, I can't forget that 42. Alright, let's write the numbers where they are supposed to be. Um, let's see, 14 is going to be A, so let's find our 14s. 14 is A, that's the only one. Um, 48 is gonna be E. Where do we have 48? Right there. I do not know what this joke is gonna be. We'll, we'll see. Um, I like to be able to figure jokes out, you know, without being told the punchline. Um, but I don't know, we'll see with this one. 20 is gonna be M. 18 is going to be N, so it's right there. Uh, let me write that N again. Then we have 32 is going to be H. That's gonna be right there. They, they something or another. Um, what else? 35 is you. 35 is you. That's right there. Uh, 6 is going to be T. So that's right there. Man, this is kind of annoying. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. What's next? 24 is T. So that's right there. But. What's this word going to be? Is it going to be but? Cut? I'm not sure. Um, 18 is Y. Where's that? 2 times 9, 18 is Y. Does that not show up, or am I just blind? I do not see it here. Hmm. Okay. 42 is going to be I, and that's right there. Oh, something about night. They, why are bats like false? Oh, they, 
They something, they only come out at night. They come out at night. Ah, that's what it is. I'm not, I'm not even going to like assign the rest because it's a waste of time. I know what it is. Um, but wait a minute. Why, why is 36? Is this worksheet faulty? I think this worksheet is faulty. It'd be really embarrassing if I got an answer wrong. Um, you know, but like, look at this. You agree with me? Two times nine, 18. Last I checked, right? And that's why. But here, why needs to be 36. They, they come out at night. Um, why are bats like false teeth? They come out at night. Um, yeah, that's not very funny, is it? <laughs> Let's try the, uh, the Lucky Charms here. And uh, I'm feeling like the Lucky Charms uh, are going to be like B tier. You know, I like the taste. Um, the texture is fine, aside from the marshmallows. And uh, let's see how they hold up to the moisturization process. Oh, God. The chocolatey parts are still fine. They hold up okay. Um, but the marshmallows get even worse. Once the cereal moisturizes, the marshmallows take on this, like, slimy uh, sort of feeling, you know? Really disgusting. Uh, God. That... The chocolate flavor is still good, but the marshmallows, man, just really unnecessary. Um, I definitely like the chocolate flavor. I don't like the marshmallows. Um, I'm going to have to put this, I think, C tier um, above Frankenberry because the marshmallows, they get really bad when they're moisturized. They're so slimy. Like, you know, it's like I'm chomping on a lily pad from the swamp. All right. Up next, it's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown, uh, which is just the name of the cereal, which is really funny to me. Like, it's just the name of, of an episode of Charlie Brown is what the cereal is called. Uh, so that's funny. I love the design of the box on this one, but again, it has marshmallows. And why on earth is it called It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown? Why is that the name of your cereal when it's vanilla flavored? It's not pumpkin flavored, it's vanilla flavored, and it has marshmallows. That's disgusting. Let's take a look at the box, and then we'll try the cereal. I love the design, but I don't have high hopes for this one. This box is gorgeous. It's too bad we got this stupid Apple TV Plus advertisement in the corner um, because if, if we just decluttered this a little bit, it'd look even better. But I just love the design on the front of this box. It's got the classic uh, Charlie Brown, you know, look here. I, I never really watched Charlie Brown much, but I do love the aesthetic of the Charlie Brown Christmas special. And it's a very eye-catching box. I mean, this is the one in the grocery store that caught my eye the most. It was just strange to me that there's a cereal whose name is just a Halloween special episode of Charlie Brown or uh, of Peanuts. I don't, I don't know what the name of the cartoon is. The comic is Peanuts, but there's the nutrition facts. Um, and then we got some fun activities here in the back. We're supposed to celebrate Halloween with Charlie Brown and friends while Linus waits for the great pumpkin. Boo hoo. Unscramble the names of the characters to reveal who is under each costume. Like I said, I uh, never really watched Charlie Brown or, or the Peanuts or whatever. So I am, I will not be able to do this. Like, I, oh, is that Sally? Maybe? That would be my guess. That's Sally. Um, the rest, I have absolutely no idea. I guess that would probably be Charlie Brown. Um, is Snoopy on here? I don't know. Snoopy's a Peanuts character, right? I don't see him on here, though, which seems kind of weird. Find the two pumpkins in the patch that are identical. I wonder what they mean by identical, because, like, they all look pretty darn similar. Um, looks like that one and that one are, like, exactly the same, so maybe that's what we're looking for. Um, I guess that's Lucy right there, right? I can, I can see that. More advertisements here in the back for Apple TV. Um, yeah, that's about it. So, aesthetically pleasing box. You got activities on the back, although they're not as fun if you don't really know peanuts. All right, with 14 grams of sugar in this bad boy, I, I hope that maybe it will be a little bit better than I expect. Um, I kind of like the way the pieces look on the box. Let's see how they look in reality. This definitely, holy shit. <laughs> it just smells like vanilla extract. Uh, here we go. Pour out a little bit of this cereal. Um, they're supposed to look like pumpkins, I assume. Um, that's what... Well, no, I guess I guess only the marshmallows are supposed to be shaped like pumpkins. The rest of this stuff is just like little balls. So there's green and orange balls. Um, 
it does have the Halloween aesthetic as far as the color goes, right? Like it's green and orange and all that. Um, so that's, that's really spooky. The marshmallows are shaped like pumpkins. Unfortunately though, they are also uh, marshmallows. So let's add some milk and try this out. Do a little bit of math and we'll see where this fits. I'm guessing, I'm guessing maybe top of D tier, but let's take a bite and, uh, and see. I don't really like cereals with spherical shapes very much, um, but these are pretty small. They're only roughly spherical. Let's give it a try. Hmm. That does not taste like much. You know, that barely tastes like anything at all. And it's already really soft. So let's get into the math quick uh, before it completely dissolves. All right, scroll through my spooky notebook here. Oh, up next we have draw faces on the pumpkins. This will be a quick and easy one. There's not actually any math here. Um, I don't know if you've ever drawn faces on pumpkins before. I like, I like this clip art. I like that picture of the pumpkin. It's a good looking pumpkin. Um, okay, so I'm gonna draw a happy face on this pumpkin. You know, I think I'll do it in black so it, you know, kind of blends in more. When I was in uh, kindergarten, I have a recollection. This is one of those recollections that I can't, it, it's like so ridiculous that it's hard for me to believe it actually happened. Um, I asked my best friend about it and he, I think, verified the story, but it's hard to verify the specifics that make the story so strange to me. The pumpkin is sad. And, um, you know, the thing is, we had this, like, coloring project related to something we were doing for Groundhog's Day. We were, like, coloring these, um, these groundhogs, and then we were going to go outside and see if, I don't know, something to do with shadows or something. But, uh, I took, like, a month to color mine, and so... So we were not able to do the project until long, long after Groundhog's Day. Um, but you know, that just seems so ridiculous because why would you wait a whole month as a teacher for one dumb kindergartner, um, you know, to, to finish coloring? Like really? We waited all, what was I doing? Was I spending every day for a month just coloring? I don't know, but that's kind of my recollection. Confused, huh? How would he look confused? Um, <laughs> I guess like that, that's a confused pumpkin. I'm really good at this. Um, why did I mention coloring? I don't know, we're drawing right now. I suck at drawing. Create my own pumpkin. Um, my own pumpkin. Uh, my pumpkin, my pumpkin will just be, uh, it'll, it's gonna have a pie on it. And as we discussed in a, a recent video I released, that's gonna be equal to zero. And we'll put a nice smiley face there. Uh, there we go, beautiful. There's our pumpkins, look at that. I love getting a little artistic uh, for the holidays. Let's go ahead and try our tasteless cereal that probably has the texture of a wet napkin now. I don't even wanna, I mean, this is gonna be disgusting. What the hell, marshmallows? Oh, <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank you. That's disgusting. That's F tier. That doesn't hold up at all. It, <laughs> it's like, uh, that's like, um, you know, oatmeal texture, except it's, it's way worse. What the heck? That's disgusting. That's soggy, wet, cold. You know, I got to think because like, because I'm, I teach math, right? I have students. There's some sentences I just have to be careful about not finishing. You know, I just don't want to finish them. Uh, that's going to be bottom of F tier for me. I mean, that texture just totally ruins it. Holy moly. Uh, I'm done with that. All right. Five cereals down, six to go. And up next, I don't have high hopes for this one. This is Boo Berry cereal. Frankenberry uh, stunk. Where'd we put Frankenberry? Uh, well, actually, Frankenberry didn't stink. The box was dumb, and that kind of colors my perception. Uh, but we got Frankenberry at the bottom of C tier. Uh, maybe, maybe Boo Berry can be our new champion. Um, the box design here is pretty similar, except it's a little better. Like, I'm okay with a ghost looking kind of goofy. The thing with Frankenberry is it's like this Frankenstein monster that's pink with strawberry nails. He looks ridiculous. It's stupid. I don't like it. Um, all right. Booberry. Let's take a closer look at the box and then we'll get into the cereal. Here is our booberry box. Looks very much like the Frankenberry. Um, the design of the ghost here is kind of weird. Like, I don't know, that facial expression, it's just giving me the creeps and like not in the way I think it's supposed to. Like, it's giving me the creeps 
in the way that like the the boo looks like he'd be a really uncomfortable customer service representative to talk to. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, there's the nutrition facts. And uh, we've got the same exact comic on the back of the box. So that really sucks. No activity, just literally the same exact comic from the Frankenberry box. Yeah, it feels really lazy that they would, um, you know, put the same thing on the back of this box. Like Frankenberry, it made sense because the comic was like, hey, look, it's Frankenberry's cousin. Um, but now it's the Blueberry cereal and we're still looking at, at Frankenberry's cousin. Um, you know, I also wonder, do these characters have the tastes that that you know like 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 that the cereal does? Does Frankenberry himself taste like strawberry? Um, I don't know. Does does Booberry taste like whatever he's supposed to taste like? Um, it's berry flavored. It's a berry flavored frosted cereal, um, as opposed to the strawberry flavored Frankenberry. Because I think Frankenberry specifically said it was strawberry flavored. This is just berry flavored. Um, it looks exactly the same as Frankenberry. Um, it's purple, which is maybe a little spookier. I kind of liked how bright red the Frankenberry was. Um, but this is definitely a little bit more Halloween colored with the kind of um, the dark-ish purple. Again, it has in marshmallows, man, that's disgusting. This is not going to be fun. Uh, but here we go. Add some milk. Probably add a little bit more than that. And uh, let's take a bite of this. Hopefully, you know, if it's got like a, a nice strong taste like Frankenberry did, but maybe just a, a tastier one, this could be good. Let's see. No. Nope. Tastes like Trix. I don't like Trix. Trix is D tier. God. Stale texture, like the Reese's Puffs bats. It tastes pretty similar to Frankenberry, but not the same. Tastes like Trix cereal. Um, marshmallows are fine, but I'm sure they'll be bad in a minute once we do a little bit of math. All right. Let's see, what do we got up next? Add or subtract. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, this one's actually going to be, like, mentally taxing. Um, this is actually a lot to add and subtract. L let let's get through this as quick as we can. Um, okay. First one. I'm going to write it in red, just because that's, that's more spooky, you know? Um, this is going to be, let's see, 600, 700, 749, 757. So that's going to be 757. Switch to my, my marker here. 757. Next one. 542 minus 116. That's going to be 426. 426. Really hope I don't get any of these wrong. Uh, next one is going to be 837. Next one is 200. Oh, God. The subtraction with the carrying. You know, this one is, um, this one is stressful. Uh, okay, so this one is going to be, let's see, 215. And then you take away the 78. So uh, this one is going to be 30, uh, 37, right? 237. Or excuse me, 137. 137. I just got to get in the rhythm, right? And then I'll be, then I'll be cooking. Um, let me just double check that, make sure. 137, add the 138, the 200. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. We're in a rhythm now for sure. 400, uh, let's see, 423, and then add the 75. So 498, I believe there. And then the next one is going to be 224. Next up uh, is going to be 52. Next, this edition is going to be 1,238. Next up, uh, this one's going to be 172. Next, this one will be, let's see, 975, I believe. I'm not going to double check. This one's going to be 544. 544. Look at that cat that cat looks pretty gross and what is that sticking out of the back i guess that's his tail but it looks gigantic it looks like the size of his head holy moly uh this next one five six seven hundred eighty um seven uh what did i just say uh 887 is not what i said but that's the answer um then this one we got let's see 1617 1617 uh, this one is going to be 7,335, 7,335. 
This one, oh, that's cute. Look at that. Look at all those repetitious numbers. 4,222. 4,222. This one's going to be 2,720, I believe. 2,720. Yeah. Uh, next up, we've got, what is this? 600, uh, 700, um, 731. 731, I think. Uh, this one is going to be 147, I believe. 147. This one, let's see, 1,240. 1,240. I really hope I don't get a bunch of these wrong because I'm not double checking here. I think, I think I'm doing pretty good. This one's going to be, I think, 88. Um, 88. This one is going to be nine, let's see, uh, 1,030, 1,042, I think, for this one. And this one here is going to be 34. All right, there we go. Look at that. I mean, this is this is addition and subtraction mastery here, my friends. Uh, let's go ahead and take a bite of our moisturized boo berry cereal. Why is the box blue? But the boo berry, the actual cereal, is all purple. This does not look good. I really don't want to eat this. You know, spitting the cereal out is gross, so I didn't want to do it again. But that was my visceral reaction, was that I did not want to eat that. I really did want to spit it out. Um, really soggy. The crunchy parts are really soggy. They, they do not feel good to eat. They feel gross to eat. The marshmallows are so slimy and disgusting. Um, I mean, God, let's see. I put the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown at the bottom of F tier because the marshmallows are so disgusting. Um, I mean, Lucky Charms and Frankenberry in theory should have been similar. I'm not running this as a super controlled scientific experiment, so it's a little weird how bad these marshmallows have been. Um, but I think I'd have to put this in F tier above It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown and underneath uh, Pumpkin Spice Frosted Flakes. All right, it's the moment I've been looking forward to. Finally, Halloween Fruity Pebbles. I mentioned Cinnamon Toast Crunch would be an S tier cereal for me. Uh, probably Fruity Pebbles would too. So Halloween Fruity Pebbles, I am a... Uh, all down for this. I think this should be pretty good. So let's take a close look at the box and then we'll get into the cereal. So there is your box of Halloween Fruity Pebbles that is filled with all the Fruity Pebble goodness. Same fruity taste you can see. Uh, so we got our characters there. I don't know the, the names of these characters, but they're stirring up a pot of Halloween Fruity Pebbles with a big stick, which doesn't really seem safe. You got bats in the background. Kind of looks like a desert with, with the way the sun is set up here. I feel like the, the box would look way better if we change the orange to like a dark blue and change the sun to a moon. This, this seems like a strange choice. Why is it so bright? Um, on the back, yabba dabba do, make your own Flintstones jack-o'-lantern. Supposed to make a copy of the stencil and size it to fit your pumpkin. Tape the stencil to the side of the pumpkin that you wish to carve. And so on and so on and cut out the shape to get a Flintstones jack-o'-lantern. Uh, that's cool. It would be really extra for me to actually cut that out and do this in the video. I'm absolutely not going to do that. Uh, so, yeah, that's the box. Looks pretty simple. Um, I would prefer to have an activity, something a little less demanding on the back. And the design of the box is a little strange, honestly, but whatever. All right, so they're not reinventing the wheel here, which is probably a good thing. They've just, just done a little color switch, right? So let's see. I, I think the thing is, like with normal Fruity Pebbles, I feel like the color is a big part of the experience. You got this bowl that's just filled with the colorful fruity pebbles. And as a kid, I think that kind of, that influences your brain and how you perceive the taste. Now, because of how thin fruity pebbles are, you know, anytime I get in an argument with people about cereal uh, and I sing the praises of fruity pebbles, naturally how they hold up to, to the milk is, is a bit of an issue because they're just so tiny. Um, I love the look of the cereal though. It's like orange and purple, looks really, uh, I don't know, it's a nice blend of like artificial Halloweenness with the purple pebbles, um, but it all kind of has the look of fallen leaves too, of like foliage with the, the, the oranges and the purples kind of get on some of that too. Um, it smells like fruity pebbles, smells just like I remember them. Um, there were definitely a lot of days where I did a lot of math after eating a bowl of fruity pebbles to get me going in the morning. So let's pour some milk in this bad boy and then we'll give it a try and see how these Halloween Fruity Pebbles are, colored orange and purple. Let's see.
Jesus Christ. Only 12 grams of sugar. I say only because they taste so, so sweet. <laughs> yeah, I love them. They're super good. I love Fruity Pebbles. All right, let's do some math. All right, well, we let those uh, Halloween Fruity Pebbles marinate. Let's do a little bit of Halloween subtraction. We want to use the pictures to solve the problems. Uh, here's the example, right? Six minus three. We got six pumpkins in the cauldron. Three have been crossed out. That leaves three pumpkins left over. Next, nine minus two. We have nine beakers with eyeballs in them. We take away two. That leaves seven beakers with eyeballs. We have five candied apples. Take away one of them. That leaves four. Why are they all in cauldrons? Like, that seems a little silly. I mean, what are we doing with this, this brew that contains eyeballs and glass and some saline preservation solution? Uh, and, and what is all this? Is this like ink? I don't know what those are. 10 minus eight. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We take away eight. That leaves two containers of ink left over. Eight gigantic Tootsie Rolls minus five gigantic Tootsie Rolls. That's going to leave three gigantic. No, no, those are uh, Smarties, aren't they? Those are Smarties, huh? Maybe we need to do like a Halloween candy tier list too. Maybe next year. Um, four cute little spiders <laughs> minus two cute little spiders. It's going to be two cute little spiders. Um, if I was an actual frog, I might, well, I, I've eaten tarantulas before. Not tarantulas, sorry, I haven't eaten a tarantula. I haven't eaten a tarantula. I've eaten uh, scorpions before. So it's, I can't really make a joke about like, if I was this, then I'd eat like spiders. Like I eat scorpions, who are we kidding? All right, uh, let's get into the, the, the Halloween pebbles um, in their state of weakness, right? Which is after a couple minutes of marinating in the milk. Um, here we go. Yeah, not very good. Even the flavor seems to have drained. Um, you know, like it's it's been dispersed throughout the milk. It does not hold up well for any substantial period of time uh, in the milk. Wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but that's probably partly because I didn't put a ton of milk in there. Not very good. Um, but right, I mean, you're not gonna you're not gonna wait minutes and do a math worksheet while you're letting it sog up. So fruity pebbles. Um, out the gate, you know, you're eating it fresh, very good. It does not hold up well to the SOG, so we do have to factor that in. And I'm gonna put Fruity Pebbles in A tier. All right, we still have more monster cereals to go. Up next is Count Chocula. Um, I'm actually in the process of reading Dracula right now. I started it last October and I just haven't finished. Gotta finish Dracula. I got like maybe 80 pages left. Um, really good novel, although I can't say why it didn't grip me enough to like pull me straight through it you know like I stopped reading it for like a year I don't know uh, but it's a pretty good novel uh, all right let's take a look at this box and then we'll crack into the Count Chocula hopefully this one's good right I'm pro chocolate but does this have marshmallows <sighs> of course it does man these monster cereals just all look the same it's Count Chocula I do like the character design on Count Chocula quite a bit more than Frankenberry or Boo Berry um He's still a little goofy looking. Like, I don't know why they gave him a, like, a buck tooth instead of fangs. Why does he have a buck tooth? Um, he also, you know, this is like the crimson chin here, Count Chocula. Um, but uh, what a strange head shape, really. Uh, it's okay, though. I mean, he looks fine. We got our nutrition facts, and on the back is just the same dang comic again. All right, so it's a chocolatey cereal with marshmallows. Um, they were really hyping up. Uh, Frankenberry's cousin here, so hopefully her cereal is, is all right. Uh, but the Count Chocula, I mean, honestly, it's just a real bummer that these all have marshmallows in them, because like, you know, they, they just don't hold up at all to the milk. Um, so all of these, the, the Count Chocula pieces, they look like spooky little ghosts. It looks exactly like Frankenberry and Booberry, um, but it's brown, has marshmallows in it. The, the marshmallows don't really look like anything. They, they actually look like cuts of like steak. Like this, this marshmallow looks like a little steak, so that's cute. Uh, it doesn't smell like much. It it smells like like the sweet marshmallows. It doesn't smell chocolatey at all. Um, so I I don't really 
have, feel confident that this is going to be better than the Lucky Charms, which were fine. Um, you know, their chocolatey, t their chocolatey taste was good. But it's the marshmallows, man. The marshmallows are just stupid. Who put marshmallows in cereal? Dumb idea. Whew. Let's give it a try. Man, it's a lot of sugar. I gotta, like, go to bed. I'm so tired. Yeah. It literally, not metaphorically, literally tastes exactly the same as the Lucky Charms. It just tastes less. It's just that cereal with the flavor toned down. That spoonful had some of the marshmallows in it. Again, they really don't do much when it's still pretty dry, um, but it's not gonna be fun when it gets wet in a minute. All right, up next we have Halloween Mystery Math. We need to find the answer to each of the problems in the top square, these problems here, write our answer in the middle square, and find the corresponding letter in the key above. I think we'll just jump straight to the letter once we get the answer. So, first problem, 642, and where is that? 642, right here, so that's gonna be H. Um, there's no, there's no like setup either. This isn't a joke. It's like just, just a message. So that's kind of funny. Have a happy Halloween. Is that what it is? Uh, let's see. 126 plus 299 is going to be 425. And that's right here. So it is a, it's going to be have a happy Halloween, isn't it? This is going to be 425, which is also a, uh, this is going to be 932, 932. Where is that? right here that's v uh-huh and then this is going to be let's see 598 598 is right there man so predictable so predictable wasn't even a setup like and obviously it's I mean, look at this dumb guy <laughs> uh 498 plus 144 um 498 is close to 500 so this is like 644 just got to take away two so 642 642 and that is going to be 642. Oh, we already got that, right? So that's H um, right there. And then this is going to be 425, right? Which is the, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're, we're not going through this charade, all right? My stupid marshmallows are getting slimy and wet. This says have a happy Halloween. And uh, we're going we're gonna to get into the, the Count Chocula again. <sighs> all right, at this point, I mean, this is just for my disgusted reaction. I know it's going to be awful. Oh! God. Jeez, Lou. I mean, the marshmallows are just so slimy. It's so disgusting. Okay. I guess, let's see. Where are we going to put this? It has to just be below Lucky Charms. Um, and honestly, uh, I'm... Something about the marshmallowiness, like mixed with the chocolate, I don't like so much. I think the marshmallows fit better with the bright, fruity flavors. Um, and Frankenberry... I mean, I know these all have to be basically the same, like they're made up of the same stuff, but the uh, Frankenberry just held up better in this one experiment. So I think I'm going to have to put this, well, hmm. I mean, it does taste like the Lucky Charms. It just doesn't taste like them as much. Um, but that doesn't mean it's C tier. I feel like it should be D tier. And honestly, I like the Reese's Puffs better. It's more unique and holds up way better to the milk. Um, that that D tier for Reese's Puffs is maybe even a little low. I don't know. But, but I'm definitely putting this in D below the Reese's Puffs for sure. All right. Up next, we have what I think is one of the more interesting looking boxes, which is the Halloween uh, Rice Krispies here. Uh, as a kid, I liked Rice Krispies well enough. I'd always like to add some sugar to, like, the normal Rice Krispies. I think it made the texture better. It kind of, like, thickened it up a little bit. And just added some taste, because normal Rice Krispies didn't taste like much. I love Cocoa Krispies. You know, I love uh, Cocoa Pebbles, love Fruity Pebbles, all the pebbly stuff. I love that. Uh, so Cocoa Krispies I was a big fan of. Normal Rice Krispies were okay. Uh, let's take a look at this box then and see how the cereal is. All right, look at this beautiful box. You've got Snap, Crackle, and Pop. They're like turning into m freakish monsters. Uh, you know, I don't know. They look like vampires, werewolves. I don't know about Crackle, but th they look creepy as heck. And they're in this like, I don't know, this sort of um, 
preservation chamber. You got a pumpkin rice crispy tree. You got the Halloween rice krispies, the shocking orange color. Um, they really went kind of all out with this box. See, this is way, way better than the Halloween fruities, fruity pebbles box, which was just like orange with nothing going on. There was a big sun, but this looks a little bit more artful. I quite like this. Um, plus you got that big spider in the corner. It's a toasted rice cereal. There's your nutrition facts. And you got a whole bunch of stuff going on in the back. There's Tony the Tiger. He's got Apple Jacks. He's got Fruit Loops. It's the Kellogg's Trunk or Treat. Tricky trail. Find your way through the Trunk or Treat crowd to the festival entrance. Um, so I guess this is a maze, right? Like, what? I mean, you just go, right? You just walk. Because, like, there's space and stuff, so you could just, like, go. <laughs> Hide and shriek. Find all these marshmallows hidden in the scene. Five monster heads, three ghosts, four bats. Okay, so you could do that while you eat the cereal. What else we got? Spooky cargo. Can you spot eight differences between these two trunk or treat cars? These two? One has three baskets, the other has two. One has a license plate, the other one doesn't. Um, one has three circular brake lights, the other one does not have three circular brake lights. One's brown, one's yellow. The trunks obviously are different. The window tints are different. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty good at this. So as far as the box designs go, this is definitely like second only to the Charlie Brown one so far. And honestly, I mean, in a lot of ways, this one's better. I think it has more cool stuff going on. It just aesthetically, I, I don't like how it looks quite as much. I love the sort of vintage look of the Charlie Brown cereal. Um, but this one appears to just be normal Rice Krispies, uh, just like the Fruity Pebbles but just with a color swap. So again, just like the Fruity Pebbles. And it looks like the color swap is, yeah, you know, it's just the, the shocking orange, it says. And uh, it looks, it makes me kind of think of like a cheese snack. Um, it, it isn't quite as, as vibrantly orange and as the, uh, the Fruity Pebbles were. The Fruity Pebbles definitely looked better. This is gonna be lame. This is just gonna taste like Rice Krispies, except they're orange. And then time is gonna pass and they're going to soak up the milk and then they're gonna be pretty gross. Uh, so let's just give them a try. They're orange, it looks like they should be cheesy. They will not be cheesy and they're not gonna taste like much at all probably. Uh, I do like the texture of these things though, you know, when they're not too soggy. Hmm. Honestly, it's a bit of a relief to have something that's not so sweet after all these sugary cereals, even though, I mean, half of them barely taste like anything anyway, that barely tastes like anything. I mean, it does not taste like anything at all. Anyway, here is our next math worksheet while we let the Rice Krispies marinate. This is a coloring activity. I hate coloring, but we're in an electronic software where it's a little easier. This is Procreate, which is where I make all of my math thumbnails. So this says anything that is, uh, like five or 10, we need to make orange. So let's select an orange color and then we'll make everything um, orange. That's five or 10. So let's see, what's five and what's 10? Uh, I see a five plus five here. So that needs to be orange. And I can just drag and drop the color this, totally painless. This is great, right? It's way, way different from being a kid coloring that groundhog that scarred me so much. Um, that's all I see for five or 10. Oh, seven plus three, that would be 10. Um, is there any five that I'm missing? I don't see a five. Okay. Um, then we've got blues should be seven and 11 is going to be blue. So this is like some pumpkin guy. We'll see what he looks like. Seven or 11 should be blue. Let's see. Seven or 11. I see eight. I see 10. I see nine. There's a seven. Five plus two. Four plus three will be seven. Um... 8 plus 3 will be 11, 6 plus 5 will be 11. Okay, so that's good, like the whole thing should be like blue, right? The body of this suit, so the design makes sense. Um, any other 7s or 11s? It does not look like it. Purples, 3 9s and 14s, okay? Purple, purple, something like, something like that. 3 9 and 14. 3, 9, and 14. Where are those going to be? I see 13. I see 8. I see 13. I see 13. 14, right? 14, 3, 9, and 14. There we go. Um, let's see. 9 right there. So there's a 9, and that means there's also a 9 right over there. 
Any threes? Yeah, two plus one, three. Four plus five is nine. 14, any more 14s? I think that's it, all right? It's coming along pretty nice. Then we've got yellow, should be eight and 13, should be yellow. 13 is right there. Um, 13 is right there. Eight is right there. Eight is right there. I chose the kind of gross yellow, didn't I? 13 is right there. I think that's gonna be it. Uh, six and 15 should be brown. Um, so let's see, that's brown, brownish. Um, what are we doing, six and 15? So there's six, that's the pants. 15, is there any 15s here? I don't know that there is any 15, I think that's it. Uh, four and 12, why is 15 even there if there is no 15? Four and 12 should be green, let's use this really bright green. Four and 12, there's a 12, there's a 12, there's a four, there's a 12, and uh, oh, nine plus one, a 10, I totally missed. I also missed a 13. Man, what am I doing? I can't even add right. 13, um, 13, eight, that was supposed to be yellow because that's eight. Um, five plus three, that's also eight. And so that's also supposed to be yellow. Six plus eight is 14. So that was supposed to be purple. I don't know how I missed these. I'm just really stressed about the soggy Rice Krispies, you know, that's what's stressing me out. And then the, uh, the hand over there was supposed to be orange, right? Because that's 10. Hey, look at that. That is the most efficiently I've ever colored in my life. What a beautiful picture. <laughs> okay, let's eat some Rice Krispies. Oh God, I, I, at least there's no marshmallows, right? Oh. I'd rather eat another scorpion. I mean, it's just so mushy, you know? It just tastes like mush with the texture. The texture's awful. Uh, well, that did not taste like anything. It's Rice Krispies, obviously doesn't hold up well with the milk. Um, adding in a little bit of sugar would definitely make it better, just like it did back in the day. Um, it doesn't have marshmallows, and I like that, but the marshmallows are only really a major problem after it sat in the milk for a while, and this still sucks after sitting in the milk. Honestly, I feel like this should probably be F tier. Um, Below pumpkin spice frosted flakes for sure, um, but no marshmallows. So I'm gonna put it above blueberry and below frosted flakes pumpkin spice F tier. Well, I fear uh, that none of these cereals are gonna end up being particularly good. We got two left, uh, starting with Frankenberry's cousin cereal. This is the Carmella Creeper cereal. So it's, you know, more monster cereal. It's got marshmallows in it. Um, but I don't know, I guess it's going to be caramel flavor or something. Maybe it'll be okay. Let's give it a try. Uh, but first we got to look at the box. Let's look at the box. Carmella Creeper. This design, I don't like that much either. It feels like there's a little more going on. Like, I mean, Carmella Creeper, the zombie here. Well, for one, she barely looks like a zombie. She just looks like a kind of generic goth horror character. Um, but, uh, I don't know, feels like there's a lot going on on the box between her character design being a little bit busier than, like, the Booberry character design. And you got the caramel dripping from the, the name here. Um, it's new. It's artificially caramel apple flavored. You can see the green ghost there and the disgusting marshmallows. Looks fine. I mean, just looks like a Monster High character. And on the back, you won't believe it, it's the same exact thing as the others. Well, that was just a really moving comic. I'm really glad we got to look at that again. Um, all right, so this is going to be a, a probably like Apple Jacks inspired, right? Because it does say it's artificial caramel apple flavor. So I'm guessing we're going for like an Apple Jacks type thing. Apple Jacks are not supposed to have marshmallows. That's disgusting. Why would you do this? Marshmallows? Really? That's disgusting. Wow. <laughs> Um, okay, I love the color of these things. The color is great. It is our super, super bright, vibrant green. I love the color. Um, green, green used to be my favorite color. Uh, now it's blue, but uh, whatever. It smells good. It smells pretty good. Um, I mean, you know, it's like smells like sugar and stuff, but uh, it smells kind of like Apple Jacks. It also reminds me of something else. It's, it's a candle, I think, that my mother would like to burn that this reminds me of. You know, some sort of like cinnamon apple pie type uh, candle um, that she would burn during the holiday season. 
Interesting. All right, well, I love the color. I, I know I'm not gonna love the, the marshmallows, uh, but let's pour in some milk and see how this cereal fares. We only got one left after this, which is the Monster Mash uh, remix or whatever that is. So let's give this a try. Mmm. <laughs> Just a relief that it like tastes different, you know? It's not chocolate, it's not generic fruit flavored. It's like this cinnamon apple flavor. Mmm. Not bad. Not bad at all. Let's let it sit there. And do a little bit of math while we wait. Uh, we're done with the coloring, I hope. What's next? A uh, multiplication mystery picture where- Ah, shit. More coloring. Use a key to color in the correct squares and reveal the hidden picture. Okay. Uh, let's start with yellow. What's going to be yellow? Anything that is 32 or 15 will be yellow. So let's look through here and color everything yellow that we need to. 32 and 15. 32. 15. Um... 32, 15. These worksheets, you know, they really take you back to the the quiet sort of contemplative excitement sitting in class. You know, maybe it's a couple days before Halloween and there's just not much going on, you know? You're sitting there, you're doing some math, you're coloring. The teacher's trying to, to just kind of shut you all up for a while while you do some math. And, uh, and kind of relax so nobody's too stressed out. You're looking forward to putting on your costume, getting a bunch of candy in the next couple nights for Halloween, and then you're going to be able to sit around eating it like all November leading up to Thanksgiving where you're going to have a big fat bird and stuff. I love it. I love it. Um, 15. I wish they had worksheets like this, but for more advanced subjects, you know, so I could give like my multivariable calculus class um, something like this. Even, even people like me who actually wouldn't like it. Like, I would not like to color as a kid because I don't like coloring. Never like coloring. Um, you know, I'd whine and complain about it, but it'd still be kind of funny. Um, okay, well, I think that's it for the yellows. Purples, let's see. You know, I've been listening to Halloween music this whole time, and my music just stopped, so I'm not sure what's up with that. 64, 7, and 27, we're going to have to color purple. 64, 7, and 27. Uh, let's see. Hopefully we don't miss any of these. 64, 7, 27. I don't remember ever doing, um, like, coloring worksheets in math. I do remember doing coloring worksheets in science. And I'd ask my teacher, how many points will I lose if I do not color this? And he'd say, well, you will lose uh, five points. And so I would just hand it in and say, whatever, man. You know, like... I'm not coloring. I hate coloring so much. But, you know, here I am, coloring while dressed up in this very spooky costume. You know, how the mighty have fallen, but this is for your uh, holiday entertainment, you know? I mean, I use the Math Sorcerer's book reviews as, like, my holiday decorating music. I just really um, enjoy listening to those. They, uh, they're they just pleasant to listen to. I like to listen to people talk about math, you know? So I, I hope you, you get some sort of similar enjoyment out of this. 64, 7, and 27. These are hard to find, you know, because I, I don't want you to just watch me silently color these. So I'm trying to blab, too. But uh, it's a lot for a man's brain to do at once, especially at this time of night. 64, 27, and 7. I feel like I probably didn't get them all. Um, but I've got all the ones I can see. And we'll be able to find the ones that I missed once we color the rest of these. Oh, there's another 27. Oh, and another 64. 64, 7, 27. I think that's all of them. All right, a whole bunch of these are going to have to be black. That's going to be 54, 70. I guess that's that's going to be because whatever this picture is, whatever this picture is, it probably takes place at night. Um, okay. Jeez, there's a whole lot of these. So let's just... Oh, my God, there's a ton of dark blues, too. Jeez, Lou. Okay. 54, 70, and 9. Everything that's 54, 70, and 9, I'm going to color black. And then I'll look at the rest of the numbers. 54, 70, and 9. 54, 70, and 9. I hope the picture looks okay, even though I'm just, you know, coloring it kind of lazily. 
54, 70, and 9. Oh, there's a 64 that I missed that's supposed to be purple um, right here. 54, 70, and 9. Let's see. Definitely uh, want to record some more math book reviews for the holiday season here so you can find some great math books to spend your money on. I've bought some very interesting math books, which I am very excited to take a look at recently. So hopefully those will be coming in the mail pretty shortly. 54, 70, and 9. Uh, 56, let's see. God, we gotta hurry up, because those marshmallows are gonna be so disgusting. Um, it's kind of really stressing me out here. 54, 79, um, okay. That's, that's all the 54, 70s, and 9s that I can see right now. Um, so let's move on to the next numbers. 16, 49, 36. 16, 49, 36. 16, 49, 36. And everything we don't color will just be uh, dark blue, right? So there you go. Um, 16, 49, 16, 49, 36. 36, 49, 16, um, let's see. 49, 16, 36, 16... Anything else here? 36, 49, 16. There's 36, there's 16. Um, I think that's pretty much everything. Okay, there's another 16. Uh, was 49 black also? Yes. Uh, and there's a 36. And everything else, I guess, is supposed to be dark blue. So let's switch to a dark blue. Um, Notability, the app that I use for the writing, has been updated recently, and their toolbar is is just kind of a pain now. Like, just to switch colors is a big pain. And I don't know what just happened there. I'm tr trying to zoom in, but my app is freaking out. Look at this, as soon as I start trash talking this application, it starts freaking out on me. It's it's emotionally volatile. So let's see, I, I don't have high hopes for what this picture's gonna be, I gotta be honest. <laughs> um, it's not really, like, like, I don't get the feeling. I don't know about you, but I don't get the feeling that this is coming together right now. What I do get the feeling of is uh, sweat running down my back because it's really hot in this costume with the light on. Uh... <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I'm gonna eat the cereal now. <laughs> Oh God, it's so green, it's so bright. Oh God, no, 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 this this is, this is gonna be awful. Like I'm looking at it, you know? And on account of my eyes seeing this, holy moly, man. Oh God. Oh. Just a small spoonful. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that worksheet took forever. Not good. Not good, but what would you expect? I would not expect anything else. Um, you know, a student told me recently that he sometimes gets a bowl of cereal, and once he pours in the milk, he goes and takes a shower, and then eats the cereal. I told him it was the most insane thing I'd ever heard. Like, I think I said that week, but I gotta be honest, it's probably... It's probably like tops of the year. I, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Um, okay, as far as the cereal goes, I quite liked it uh, when I first tried it. Didn't hold up super well in the milk, but it was in there for quite a long time. It has marshmallows. That sucks, especially because it makes it work worse in the milk. Um, but it does have a unique flavor, you know? Not every, like like so many of these cereals just take like taste like artificial fruit. Um, that does taste like artificial fruit, but it's a very distinctive artificial fruit taste. And so honestly, I feel like this is a good pick for a B tier. I love the color. Um, the taste is pretty good. Doesn't hold up great in the milk. None of these hold up great though. And this one doesn't hold up especially bad, at least in the context of all of these marshmallowy cereals. So I'm going to put the Carmella Creeper cereal, uh, Frankenberry's cousin in B tier. Well, we are nearing the end of our time together. And unfortunately, it does seem like there are going to be no S-tier cereals. I mean, this is just, what's Cinnamon Toast Crunch doing? They're making like churro cereal? Where's the Cinnamon Toast Crunch Halloween cereal? That's what we need. That would be S-tier, no question. But alas, 
our last hope on the spooky night is a cereal by the name of uh, Monster Mash Remix. So I actually don't know what this is. I assume it's like all the monster cereals we've been eating mixed together. That's my guess. And, you know, it's a play on the famous Monster Mash song, which is a great classic. I used to record, back when I uploaded a lot of music videos to YouTube, I would record a cover, really lazy, like terrible cover, of the Monster Mash uh, every year. I probably only did that for like two or three years, but, uh, oh God, I'm so tired. I don't want to eat more soggy marshmallows, man. I really just don't want to eat more soggy marshmallows. But, duty calls, let's take a look at the box and crack into our final cereal. Here is the Monster Mash Remix cereal. We've got... Carmella Creeper as our new star uh, there in front of the cheese moon. Bunch of disgusting marshmallows. I guess these are all the pieces that are in the cereal. But it's strange. They call it Monster Mash Remix, but what, it only has two of the cereals in it? The, the green one and the purple one? That's weird. There's the wolf character who doesn't have his own cereal, and he looks very silly. There's Frankenberry looking like a total goober. There's a mummy character also looking like a goober. All the characters just look like goobers. You know, if any cereal was going to have something different on the back, it would be this one, right? This is the remix, the Monster Mash remix. And, uh, yeah, there you go. So, yeah, I really feel like the box does not make it clear what this cereal is. Um, I believe it's just like all the monster cereals mixed together. That seems to be what it is, but it's not completely clear based on the box. Um, but it is suggested, and that uh, does appear to be what it is. Although I don't see any Frankenberry in here. Um, what the heck? What? There's Boo Berry, and there's the Carmella Creeper, the green cereal, right? Uh, but there's no Frankenberry. There's also no Count Chocula, which is probably good, right? Because why would we want, like, the chocolate in here? That'd be disgusting. Um, but yeah, there's just, like, there's the greens and the blues, and then there's the, the disgusting marshmallows. Why is there no Boo Berry? That's really weird. This is, like, already F tier. That, that doesn't make any sense to me at all. Um, yeah, you know, it smells how it smells. You know how it smells. It's just artificial fruit flavor. Uh, let's pour in the milk and give this final cereal a try. This is probably going to be, like, C tier. Um, here we go. At least we get to do one more math worksheet together, right? That's going to be fun. And uh, I can even keep my frog glove on while we try this final Monster Mash cereal. Oh my god. Wow. That cereal that just tastes like artificial berries. Let's move on um, to a math worksheet while that cereal moisturizes. And uh, this, this, this next one has the ghosts on it. I think we saw that a few minutes ago. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, this is like a whole drill. Um, <laughs> this is scary multiplication. Don't be afraid to answer these questions. It's only Halloween. Not yet. It's getting close, though. Um, okay, let's let's power through these. Um, try them with me, right? Do you know your multiplication facts? You gotta know your multiplication facts, man. I mean, come on. 468. Um, 60. Uh, this one's gonna be 266. This one's gonna be 140. This one is going to be one, uh, 207. This one is going to be 217. 217. This one's going to be 78. Uh, this one's going to be 75. This one's going to be 243. This one is going to be, let's see, 160, uh, 2, 224. This one's going to be 140, uh, 203. This one's going to be 280, uh, 312. This one is 120. This one is 64. This one is 400. This one is, let's see, um, um, <laughs> 512. This one is 160. This one is two, four, uh, two, 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 uh, 268. This one is, let's see, four, uh, uh, 525. This one is 185. This one is, uh, 802. I think that's wrong, but I'm skipping. I'm moving on. Uh, 800, uh, what's this next one? 98 times nine. That's like a hundred times nine, you know, which is 900 minus the 18. So, 872. And by that, of course, I mean 882. 
Uh, and then this one is going to be 98. Uh, what else do we have? 54 times 6 is 324. 93 times 5 is 465. 87 times 6 is uh, 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 522. 82 times 9 is going to be 738. Cut me some slack, man. It's so late. Uh, 71 times 8, 568. And, uh, and I'm hyped up on sugar, too, you know? 846. 846. Uh, what else we got? Okay, next layer. Oh, Jesus. 78 times 9. This is going to be, uh, oh, God. 630, 630, 630, 730, 702. 702. Uh, this next one, 192. Uh, this next one, let's see, 270 and uh, then uh, 306. This next one's going to be 74. This next one, 720, 765. This next one is going to be 480, 496. Uh, this, this one over here is 90, 144. Uh, this one, 98 times 6 is going to be uh, 540, 545, 88. Eight. Uh, this one up here is 146. Uh, this one here is going to be 105. This one is 30. This one is uh, 192. This one here is 330. This one here is 360. Uh, this one here is 495. This one here is 366. This one is 300. This one is 165. This one is 100. This one is, let's see, 560, and uh, then that's going to be a 616. This one is uh, going to be, you know, 450, 485 there. And uh, this one's going to be 280. This one here is going to be 420, 420, 480. Uh, you know, 483. This one's going to be 160, 192. This one is going to be 800 and... Uh, um, uh, 46, you know, 846, 180, uh, 134. This one here is 292. Uh, this one here is 108. And then at long last, this one is 238. All right. I think I probably got all but one of those, right? Maybe I got two wrong. Uh, hopefully I didn't get any more than that wrong. Um, all right. I guess we have to eat soggy marshmallows again, don't we? All right, I'll just bite the bullet on this. Get my bowl of cereal over here. My Monster Mash, what's it called? Monster Mash Remix cereal. This is spooky, these soggy marshmallows. This is spooky, really spooky. All right, one bite. Oh, God. So much sugar. Um, uh, I got through that multiplication as fast as I could, so that, that wasn't as bad as it could have been as far as the texture goes. Um, I, I feel like the flavors from Boo Berry and from the Carmella Creeper cereal are kind of better when they're able to speak for themselves. Bringing them together does literally nothing. I wonder if they didn't put Boo Berry in this, because it literally would just, like, taste exactly the same as Frankenberry. I don't know. It'd be a neat idea to mix the cereals together if the cereals had more variation in the first place. But like the most distinct ones would be one of the fruit ones and Count Chocula. And those two weren't mixed, which is probably for the better. I just think it's maybe not a great idea in this context. So Monster Mash Remix, let's see. Honestly, um, it's not as good as Count Chocula, but you see, just cause it has a decent amount of flavor, I wanna put it above Frosted Flakes Pumpkin Spice. But I feel like Frosted Flakes Pumpkin Spice is just a more pleasant experience. Like, this is getting a little ridiculous. I mean, it's green, it's purple, it has marshmallows. It's so dang sweet. Honestly, I'd rather have Frosted Flakes Pumpkin Spice. So I'm gonna put Monster Mash Remix uh, in F tier. I'm gonna put it right above the Rice Krispies and right below the Frosted Flakes Pumpkin Spice. And so there's our tier list. We got one A tier, Halloween Fruity Pebbles, one B tier, the Carmella Creeper, um, which honestly all on its own probably wouldn't be B tier, but in the context of these cereals, it, it kind of stood out a little. The Lucky Charms chocolate was cool, would have been better without the marshmallows. Uh, so we have that and Frankenberry rounding out C tier. I love the color of Frankenberry, just like the Carmella Creeper. Um, Reese's Puffs Bats, honestly, I don't know about that pick. I'm not going to change it, but putting that in D tier feels a little harsh. Um, if I had rated that last, I feel like I probably would have put Reese's Puff Bats. Um, you know, actually, let, let's just do it. Let's commit to this move. Like, when I had it, I was thinking D tier. But now, after the fact, I, I feel like 
I mean, all these cereals are pretty close together, right? I know I'm in an awkward pose here because I'm reaching to my tier list, but uh, I'm moving it up to the top of B. I know that seems like a crazy huge change that makes this all seem kind of arbitrary, but uh, honestly, it's just such an ordinary cereal that's such a relief compared to these harsh, fruity, marshmallowy flavors. Um, and like the Count Chocula, which isn't fruity, would have been better if not for the marshmallows and the fact that it just didn't taste like very much. The Lucky Charms was like the same thing, but tasted better. So that's my final tier list. I think Reese's Puffs Bats, that was that was an error putting that in D tier. I think that deserves B. And I feel pretty good about the rest of this. Really disappointed with It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. All the monster cereals pretty much taste the same. I mean, you know, it's just uh, not very good. I guess that's why adults like eat real food for breakfast. I have a breakfast sandwich every morning for breakfast. Like I make one. It's not it's not Jimmy Dean's, you know, like I, I cook the breakfast sandwich. It's really good. A slice of tomato, some Munster cheese. Love that stuff. Uh, anyway, the last thing I'll mention here is just what, what my favorite Halloween tradition used to be. Um, it wasn't binge eating Halloween cereals. And I'd never been one for movies really. So um, it wasn't Halloween movies either. I don't remember watching too many Halloween specials. I'm sure I did, but it didn't make lots of memorable experiences for me. For me, the most, the most cozy, memorable experience, taking apart, like taking away the trick or treating. So obviously, the trick or treating is really memorable. But I love trick or treating with my friends. And then, whenever I could, you know, if Halloween's on like a Friday or a Saturday or something, um, my friend would come over or a friend would come over and spend the night with me at my house. And my favorite memory is being there with my boy, and we we're just trading candy. We're in the, uh, what, what we call the family room, which was down in the basement by the stove. I grew up in northern New Hampshire. So by late October, you know, it's frigid. It, it can be. It's pretty cold. And uh, we're by the stove. We're trading Halloween candy. We might be watching some Halloween specials, but then we turn on the Super Nintendo and play some Super Tecmo Bowl. And that's where it was at. Trading Halloween candy, gossiping, talking about school talking about girls, eating candy, and playing Super Tecmo with my boy Colton. Haven't talked to my boy Colton in a long time. If you're out there watching this, Colton, I miss you, buddy, and uh, happy Halloween. <laughs>